Hey, this is Chris from Play Comics over at PlayComics.com, and you're listening to Odd Dad Out. Beginning Odd Dad Out podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Odd Dead Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, Adam Higgins, the Odd Dead Out. You can find me at odddeadoutpodcast.com. Well, there's something else coming about that I'll tell you in a minute. And on all the social medias at Odd Dead Out. And this is a show where I'm getting back to normal. I tell you about weird shit that goes on with me. I make fun of weird shit from the news. And I tell you about podcasts that I think you should be listening to because sharing is caring and all that jazz. (laughs) And all that jazz. Anybody else seen Victor Victoria? I love that movie. Shut up. Leave me alone. Don't judge. Anyway, (laughs) I am back and I am sorry I missed last week. Um, long story short, you know, all the stuff I was talking about with, you know, cleaning house and putting shit together and all that stuff. Yeah, it's still going on. That's what it is. So, yeah, that, 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 that's kind of the gist of it. It's, I'm just damn busy. There's so much shit going on. It's like we're here, we've been here a month and where there's so many things to still do. Never mind that, you know, start of the new semester for school. And so we've got to schedule. Count, uh, conferences and, you know, boys getting back into their groove and us getting into kind of a new routine because for the most part, when we moved, they had a, a half week of school. They went to school for like three days while we were in this house. And so we hadn't really established our routines yet. And of those days, my wife actually had a lot of them off of work because of just feeling uh, not great or like the move itself and all those things. So the week, the like little bit of time they went to school in the, before, when we first moved in December, everything like it, it, the, our routines were not figured out. It was all just new. We we're so meh. So now we're figuring out routines. Now we're figuring out, okay, this is the route to school. This is the things to do. And me getting my timing down for taking them to school and my wife getting her timing down for taking them to school. And picking them up and our just our daily routines of being in the house. Still kind of getting things established because things are different to do, you know, and it's not the same doing laundry here as it was in the old house, which doesn't seem like a a major thing you think about. But like our laundry room being inside the house, not out in the garage. And how like the bedrooms are arranged and it's a silly thing. And like how like the laundry held the laundry baskets we have now because we got those like rolling cart laundry baskets because boys, when you got four boys, their clothes gets damn heavy. And so you start, it, it's just a pain in the ass to move laundry baskets. So we got the rolling laundry basket things, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just so much going on. And so, yeah, it just makes it tough in these last few weeks to sit down. And again, there, and there's a bunch of other stuff going on, which you get to. Um, like I've actually been <laughs> so many days this last couple of weeks because I think I mentioned before that when we moved in, when we bought the house, there's no backyard. Okay. There's a backyard. There's no landscaping in the backyard. Our backyard is currently dirt. And that's kind of a problem when you have a white dog and when it's also kind of the rainy season as we're transitioning you know, technically it's supposed to be the dead of winter right now. It's like 70 degrees outside, but it's also been raining for the last few days. It's actually rained a lot while we've been in this house, which is very um, inconvenient, let's say, because we have a white dog who likes to roll in the dirt. And he did that in the old house too. He, you know, we'd send him out and he'd roll around in the dirt because we actually didn't have grass in the other house either. But you know, he, he likes to go out there and roll in the fresh dirt. And right now, because we have a yard of entirely dirt and it's kind of fresh churned, you know, dirt because, you know, new construction and all, he comes back in after, you know, he's got to go out and pee. He's got to go do his business out in the yard. And 
Well, he'll come back in after it's been raining and he will be like, if, if you had to describe ankle deep in mud, <laughs> his paws will just be completely covered. And then he comes in and it's like red mud because Arizona. And so he comes in with this like red mud paws and just comes in and trounces all over the house. Trounces? Is that, is that the right word? I don't know. He trounces all over the house. And on the, on the plus side, the main common areas of the house are all tile. Like the living room, the kitchen, the boys study, all that stuff. It's all tile. Not a big deal. Mildly annoying. We do have to sweep every day. <laughs> and I actually got a big, like, you ever see one of those big janitor dust mop push things? Like, I got one of those, like a small version of that because it takes forever to sweep. So we got one of those to be able to sweep every day. But, you know, he comes in and he's shedding mud as it's drying off of his paws. But there's carpet in the bedrooms. And on top of there being carpet in the bedrooms, there's like white carpet. It's like a grayish kind of tan white. You know what I'm talking about. If you ever see this this carpet, it's not white white, but it's that grayish brown white. <laughs> anyway, we have that color carpet in the office and in the bedrooms. So if he comes through with his friggin' red muddy paws, clear through that, like you, and nice happy. I would say happy, not happy. Uh, paw prints all over the damn place. And of course, his bed is in our bedroom because he's got, you know, attachment issues. So his bed is in our bedroom. So if he goes out in the morning, he comes back to bed, happy little footprints clear through the fucking carpet. But, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't. It was like, what? He's a dog. What's he going to do? It's like he does his business in the yard. There's no grass. What's he? It's not his fault that there's no grass out there and he gets muddy. So what we have been doing in the last couple of weeks and part of what's kind of held me up last week was I've had a lot of landscapers. We've been um, having a lot of landscaping companies coming out and doing estimates and holy fuck is landscaping expensive. Now, I knew it wasn't cheap. But I did not expect, we were like, when we were going to have the builders do the landscaping, it was going to cost us about $4,000. That's what it was going to run. And, you know, this kind of a cookie cutter, here's how much they do. They put this much rock in the yard for drainage. They put, like, this is rock. This is this little bit of grass. And it was a tiny fucking patch of grass. And that was what we kind of didn't want. But this tiny little you know, strip of grass and then a ton of rocks and a bunch of little shrubs and a couple of mesquite trees. We're like, okay, it's a very cookie cutter. And I think one of our neighbors actually has that exact thing. And we're like, eh, it's a good thing we didn't get it because it's not enough grass. We want more grass. We want most of our yard to be grass. Uh, for legal reasons and drainage and stuff, they have to have like a rock border, like, like two feet off to keep it from you know drainage and all that kind of stuff but like we started having uh landscapers come out to do estimates and you know it was gonna be four grand and we're like okay well our our uh building whatever did her title but the lady our, our office manager lady who kind of facilitated our purchase of the home um she was like hey one of our guys just had his landscaping done it costs a lot less than what our guys charge here. I'll give you their card. So we got the number. Um, I don't know if we've called that guy yet. Probably need to, but he's like, okay. And, and we're like, okay. So we are thinking the $4,000 that they're going to charge is high. That's what we're thinking. And then I get the first estimate in and like there were a couple, I went through Home Advisor and they were like, Oh, I need to do landscaping, Home Advisor, da, 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 da. And they start, you know, but companies start calling you or emailing you or whatever to set up appointments, whatever. I get, to, <laughs> I do this. The first company comes out and they come out, they do measurements and stuff. And they're like, All right, I'll email you, uh, all this stuff with our little map of here's the plan and all this in a couple of days. It'll show you all the stuff and all the pricing. You can do all that. You know, have an itemized list. So if there's anything you want to take off, you can just take that off. And that's what we do. 
And then another company comes out, and this guy actually did kind of a, a on-site estimate, and he like you know measures the yard. I'm like, okay, this is what I want. I want as much grass as possible. I know I need rock around the around the border for uh, uh, drainage and all that stuff, and it needs to be graded. But like, I want as much grass as possible, and I want a lemon tree, and that's it. Like, okay. And he just like punches it up in his little calculator and writes notes, and he's like. And so the first guy, and pretty much the same day as that guy is coming in, the other estimate came in. It's like, first guy, estimate comes back, and it's going to be about almost $6,000. Now, he put in like a little paver seating area that I didn't fucking ask for. But I'm like, all right. It's like, hey, it's itemized list. Take the pavers off. All right, I don't need pavers, and I don't need the sand for the pavers. Nix all that shit. All right, so we're looking about $4,000. I'm like, well... Fuck, if, if I'm going to pay the same amount, what the fuck am I hiring you for? I'll just get in touch with the, the builder guys. I'll just talk to them and have them do it because it's the same fucking price. There's no reason to go outside of them. Well, the other guy comes in and he does his on-site estimate and you're like $6,700 for just the grass and the rock. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Almost $7,000. You were doing less than the other guy did. And you're doing far less than what the builder was going to do. And I know the builder is going to charge up a high price. So you were like a third more than the builder. And you're doing less. The fuck? No, thank you. Bye. And so I, I had another couple of appointments and I'm waiting on estimates from like, how the fuck is 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 it's so expensive to put grass in my yard. Seriously. Like, really? I, I understand that, yeah, you have to grade it, and there's a lot of churning soil and laying blah, 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 and, and transporting materials. The main reason I'm not doing this myself, I'm completely capable. I have these, the personal skill set. I've done this kind of work before. The reason I'm not doing it is I don't have the time or the resources. I do not have a week of afternoons to sit in my backyard with a rototiller and trucks and trucks and trucks of rocks showing up. I don't have a wheelbarrow for one, but I don't have the resources to do this. I don't have the time. Um, seriously, I'm almost considering just buying a fuck ton of material from Home Depot. But like go, it's like, oh, I'm going to get some bunch of topsoil and like, it's almost worth it for me to try and do it myself. But the biggest thing is like the irrigation system, the sprinkler system, because my wife wants a tree. Okay, fine. Get a tree. Get a tree. We'll get like, you know, a lot of the little stuff is like, okay, well, we need like a little retainer, uh, brick retainer wall for the rock around the border fine and then we need uh like all the rock around the border and my wife wants a lemon tree okay put a lemon tree in the corner no big deal i'm not an expert with planting trees and i'm not about to um claim to be one granted you know you can have call the nursery place and they'll install it they'll you know plant a tree for me but you know it's it's those things it's just a lot of little things and a lot of little things that take a lot of time and a lot of time i don't have it takes, I mean, you see all just the, the meeting with people and planning of stuff has kept me from doing this. And this takes me very little time compared to what it would take to landscape my entire backyard. And that's all just manual labor that's going to kick my ass. So yeah, I'm just like, hey, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Again, I can. I have the skill set. I know how to do it. I know what to look for. I know what to buy. I know how to install an in-ground PVC hardline irrigation system and wire it to my box out in my garage. I know how to do that. I have the skills. I don't have the time. <laughs> and to do all of those things, you really need a truck. And I don't have that. <laughs> Hell, if it, if, you know, I don't know. I, I actually don't think he's actually capable of doing it. I know my sister can, but I don't think her husband has a truck. He's a big guy. He's got a truck. But 
I don't think he actually knows how to do landscaping. <laughs> like, hey, like you guys, do you think you guys can, like, if I told my sister, hey, I need my yard, uh, I need to do the landscaping in my yard, I could probably get her to do it. Actually, she volunteered. But I'm just like, I'm almost at the point now of getting like a manual tiller or something that I can churn up the soil with, maybe get, you know, some bags of topsoil or whatever, and then start just seeding and like, fuck it, I'm just going to seed the yard. And the reason you don't seed, especially in Arizona, you seed, you don't seed just dry ground like I have is because birds will come and eat your seed. <laughs> and I think my sister actually did seed her yard. And so I may just see, you know, Hey, did what did, how, what's your success rate with just seeding your yard right now? And I think she was putting down a winter lawn, but whatever. Ultimately it's just fucking expensive and it's, it's a lot of work. And I just don't know if I have the time or the energy or whatever to do it, but I need to. Because I'm really tired of giving Jasper baths just because he rolled in the dirt and is no longer a white dog. And so, yeah. But, you know, it's it's just one of those, like, it's going to take months. And I'm almost thinking, like, I could seriously probably seed the yard before I could get somebody in here to do it. And maybe that's just what I got to do. Maybe I just have to go in and fucking seed the grass. And just put fucking grass seed in the whole yard and do what it's going to do and go from there. And maybe later I'll hire a landscaper to come out and put down rock and maybe plant a tree. But I think at this point, I just want some fucking grass. I think I think that's probably what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to get some fucking seed and clean up the yard a bit, you know, get a good like. I don't know, <laughs> get a, get a little machine or something and, and churn up the yard a bit and put fucking seed and just be done. And it's like, here, fucking seed, be seed. And, you know, have to deal with the fact that, yeah, when you have a dog and you're laying fresh seed, it kind of gets messy, but whatever. And I'll deal with, you know, if I have a patchy, not the greatest lawn for a bit, but I have a fucking lawn. And I think that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at at this point because no matter what, it's gonna get messed up from dog. <laughs> Have dog. Dogs make messes. The end. So I think that's that's fuck it. That's probably what I'm gonna do. But we'll see. I will keep you updated on the saga of my lawn. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna get some more coffee, play you some promos, and I will be right back. With the news. Hey everyone, I'm Danny over here at the Wheel Weaves podcast, where we're diving into the series The Wheel of Time. Are you a super fan? Awesome. Never heard of it? No problem. The Wheel of Time is one of the top selling fantasy series ever, and it was picked up by Amazon to be the next big TV show. Our podcast is safe for first time readers because it's made by me, a first time reader. I'm joined by my co host Brett, a longtime fan who is acting as my tour guide as we journey into the series for chapter analysis, character breakdown, and probably wrong predictions. Find us at the Wheel Weaves podcast on social media and listen in on your favorite podcasting app. Good morning, you beautiful ladies and gentlemen. If you're not indifferent to the video games as a medium, as art, or just as a way of spending time, you probably know how good games are a rare commodity lately. I notice it too. And here in Duckin' Games Podcast, we try to dig deeper into the understanding of video game design, so that more people will know about good and bad game design practices. And maybe one day there will be more good games because someone knew those practices. Or at the very least, people will stop spending hard-earned money on bad games. So, see you around, guys! Bullshit from the news. Woo! Alright, it is time for the news. 
And you remember, and I never say this, but I should, you can send me your own weird ass news stories, anything you think that I should talk about, send them to the Oddballs Facebook group at odddeadoutpodcast.com slash group. So of course the link is in the show notes as always, or just tag me on social media. I'm at odddeadout. But getting that out of the way, <laughs> I just wanted to say that. What can I say? But leading off today in a case of y'all really got to work on your interdepartmental communication. <laughs> oh, Subaru doesn't pay attention to the acronym for their show car. So at a recent SEMA uh, car show, and I forget what SEMA stands for, but it's a big fancy ass car show. So, it's, so you know that. Um, at a recent SEMA show, they unveiled the Subaru Forester Ultimate Customized Kit Special Edition. And interestingly enough, when this was all printed out in front of the car on the big display, all of the initials except for the E in addition were all capitalized. And if we're playing the home game and looking what this is, it prominently spelled out the Subaru Fucks Edition. <laughs> Let's back this up. The Forester Ultimate Customized Kit Special Edition. This is like, what was that movie Accepted? Where the school was the South Harmon Institute of Technology, this, where the school was literally, you know, acronym was shit. Somebody did this on purpose. There's no way. And I realize Subaru, I believe, is an Australian company. But I don't care where you are from. Nobody accidentally, especially with such a long ass fucking name like that, nobody accidentally makes the acronym fucks. <laughs> that, that, that's just that. So <laughs> naturally, Subaru corporate uh, pops up and we're like, Oh shit. <laughs> um, this wasn't, uh, we didn't approve this. This is the special edition department or whoever the fuck. Like, this is not our doing. We, we, you know, we had nothing to do with this. This is not our fault. And I don't, again, I just said they're Australian, but I'm using this uh, no, no, accent. But <laughs> they're like, they basically disavowed this car. And we're like, obviously we're not selling this in the U.S. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure if you tried to put that, never mind, it's a fucking long name, but if you tried to put that on the car, yeah, the, the, I don't know what rules censorship has when it comes to naming a car, but I'm pretty sure you can't put the Subaru fucks on the back of a car anywhere in the States. I don't think you could put that on a sticker and, and avoid getting pulled over. Oh God, somebody pay attention. Communicate with your departments. But speaking of really poorly named items, and I'm sure by now you've heard of this because all of this is what I meant to talk about last week. Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop, which is already a stupid name for a fucking brand. God, I like you want to smack her just for it. And like, she's a good actress, but seriously, she lives on another fucking planet. But Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop came out with a candle titled, uh, This Smells Like My Vagina, which apparently was just a joke that was said when they were, uh, like, testing out candle scents or something, and she said, This Smells Like My Vagina, which I, I don't know what the fuck you're doing with your vagina. But that's what the candle is called. And you know what? This fucking thing, it costs $75. And it probably costs $75 because everything from Gwyneth Paltrow's brand is super expensive unnecessarily. You're paying a lot of money for the name. Like, you're paying Harley Davidson money for a candle. Um, it's a fucking candle, people. It's made of wax and essential oils. And people are paying $75 for this. And this thing sold out like 
like like that. But done. And like, really? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? You why does everybody want to buy the vagina candle? Do you want to know what theoretically know what Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina smells like? Even as a scented candle? And do you want that in your house? Really? <laughs> what if all of her, her, you know, uh, fucking fixes or whatever the shit she peddles or is all a lie? It's, this, this can't, I don't understand why. I don't understand the draw. And apparently they've finally got them to where you can pre-order them now for when they're back in stock. But still, it's a fucking the name, seriously. And that maybe people are buying it as a gag gift. I'm, I'm hoping people are buying it as a gag gift and not serious because really? <laughs> but I mean, it's that, that's, that is ultimately the thing is that because it's Gwyneth Paltrow and just, this goes for like all celebrity brands. Seriously, the people who buy this shit, they would buy anything from her. Literally, I mean, they just bought a fucking candle that's called This Smells Like My Vagina, and they fucking bought it. They sold that shit out. This goes for fucking Kylie Cosmetics and every other fucking cosmetics, celebrity cosmetics brand and lifestyle brand. And stop. Wait, what's what's the, the honest brand? I think what's that? Jessica Alba, I think, is the honest brand. And she got the shit sued out of her over shit with that brand. Stop people. Like people will buy these brands. They'll buy the shit associated with the celebrity because of the celebrity attached to it. It's fucking stupid. Stop it. Because you know what? If there was a candle that just went on the market titled This Smells Like My Vagina and it had nothing to do with Gwyneth Paltrow or Goop, which again, stupid fucking name, nobody would buy it. It would be buried in a back wall of Spencer's for like six bucks. Why? Because a candle costs about six bucks. It's $75. You're paying 69 of those dollars. <laughs> Just going off the six dollar candle thing. You're paying about 69 of those dollars to Gwyneth Paltrow for a fucking candle. Idiots. Stop it. Stop feeding these fucking celebrity bullshit brands that make the same bullshit that everybody else can make for, you know, like a tenth of the cost and you're paying all this money to the fucking celebrities and their agents and their bullshit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't like, I don't really like celebrity brands. <laughs> I think the only thing I've ever bought that was like, I, 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 there's a thing about, there's certain celebrities that I would buy their thing not because it's their thing, but because I trust their endorsement of a thing. Like, you know, not to get on a side, you know, tangent here. Alton Brown does not endorse anything. He does not put his name on anything. He doesn't have a brand. But there is a handful of products that he endorses. There's like, I like this thing. He, there's a set of knives that he likes that he says, if you want, I, I endorse, I thoroughly endorse these knives. I think he had, for a short while, he had a, a line of bow ties because he wears bow ties, shit like that. But for the most part, he doesn't, like, he, he, his integrity remains intact because his expertise and his integrity are very important. Because honestly, I don't think anybody would be hurting if Gwyneth Paltrow's whatever the fuck she puts out was a piece of shit. Why? People are going to buy it. She's going to make a fuck ton of money. And it doesn't matter because she has, not to disparage Gwyneth Paltrow any more than I've already said. She doesn't have integrity like that. She's an actress. She's a pretty face. And so she doesn't have to, her endorsement really doesn't mean shit. The same with any other celebrity. Their endorsement doesn't actually mean jack shit for anything because they aren't an expert in some field of thing that makes their opinion or their, their whatever any more valid than yours. So stop trusting the, the endorsement of a celebrity that is not in the field of the thing they're making. Wearing a lot of makeup does not make you an expert in fucking uh, cosmetics. I'm saying. All right. Moving on. Because I probably just pissed off a lot of people. 
<laughs> it's time. Believe it or not, that wasn't it. And they seem to be doing that a lot more recently. It's time for the Jackass of the Week. <laughs> Chinese man eats undercooked pork and ends up with brain worms. Yeah, brain worms. So, after suffering seizures for nearly a month, a construction worker in eastern China, because it seems like that's where all these things happen, finally went to the hospital after a month. If you weren't having seizures and you suddenly started having seizures, I'd go to the doctor immediately. But that's me. And I don't like the doctor. So, a series of MRI scans showed over 700. Let's wind that back. 700 pork tape worms in his lungs and brain. Yeah. And this particular variety of tapeworm comes directly from eating raw and undercooked pork, which is exactly what he just did, oh, about a month before his symptoms started. The dude was literally eating undercooked pork like, oh, no, it's no big deal. Like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's fine. And again, Chinese. I don't know why. I never do the proper accent for any story that I ever do. I don't know why. <laughs> I feel like an idiot sounds like an idiot sounds like an idiot. And if I do a Chinese accent, then I'm being offensive. But I can make anybody sound like a generic idiot. Uh, uh, fucking redneck. I don't, no offense to rednecks, but it seems like my default idiot voice does not cover Chinese people or Australian uh, car manufacturers. Everybody's an idiot and you all sound like the same idiot when I'm making fun of you. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody out there, any Chinese listeners out there, would you rather I use a, a really bad Chinese accent to make fun of this idiot Chinese guy or just stick with generic idiot thing? Uh, <laughs> let me know. I'd odd dad out on the social medias. Hit me up on Twitter. Da da. Okay. <laughs> Show at odd dad out podcast.com. Pa pa. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a schmuck. All right. Yeah. Seriously. Like, what the fuck? People. Okay. I, I There is a disproportionate number of these t- type of stories where people just do stupid shit that I cover from China. And I realize this is probably literally a a statistical thing. Like there are way more like three, four times more people in China than there are in America. So, you know, I bet if you like, you know, found a common denominator, the amount of stupid is the same. But stories like this, like you would not hear a story, really. You wouldn't hear a story about somebody getting brain worms from undercooked pork in the States. You wouldn't. Why? Seriously, people. And maybe it's just a, you know, it's a difference of culture. It's like, oh, farm-raised pigs, and they live out, they're more free-range, and, you know, this was whatever, versus, you know, farm-grown pigs that are loaded with antibiotics and shit like that, and if they had tapeworms, they wouldn't be sold for meat. Shit like that. I don't know. Don't know. Nevertheless, Cook your fucking food. <laughs> and I say this both as somebody who makes fun of a lot of people here who do stupid shit and somebody who a cooks, who has previously cooked for a living, was a certified food safety sanitation manager for 10 years, who was going to go into the army as a health inspector. Cook your fucking food. You know, and I, I'm somebody who, like, my wife hates this. My wife is a everything must be ultimately, like, ultra well done to the point of, like, burgers must have char. They damn near, like, she wants, like, shoe leather burgers sometimes. Cause she wants that shit all the way cooked, steaks all the way cooked through. I am a, a medium steak person. I am a a medium well burger person and I'm a medium well burger person because I just want to make sure it is cooked through. I don't want raw hamburger. Um, But man, a medium steak to me is butter and it just melts in your mouth. For her, that's death 
It's disgusting. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's just the difference between us. Fine. But, you know, again, that's a case of like USDA cleared meat or whatever, but I'm not about to make pork chops rare. There's certain things you don't cook. Like you don't do white meat, just period, really. Like you don't undercook chicken. You don't undercook pork. Why? Because naturally these animals are full of fucking parasites and bacteria and things just by existence. Pigs are have a particular variety of parasites, like tapeworms. You know, pretty much like almost every chicken has salmonella. That's why you can't fucking do anything. What chicken must always be cooked to death because salmonella. Things happen. Certain animals and certain meat just has a tendency to have certain side effects of not being cooked right. Fortunately, beef is less prone to that. But either way, cook your fucking food. Like, if I had a steak, like, I could not eat a rare steak if you paid me. I couldn't. It's just not. I need some, I need some sort of done. But, like, I, I, I could not fathom eating a rare pork chop or got anybody. I used to have people I say this back when I used to, to work in chicken, I, I, I sold wings. There were people who wanted us to undercook wings. There were people who wanted rare chicken and we would tell them one, that's crazy. Two, that's like dangerous and hazardous under any circumstances. Even properly handled, undercooked chicken is dangerous. Therefore, it's illegal. You can't serve undercooked chicken on purpose. Now, if you fuck up and didn't cook it thoroughly, that's negligence. You do it on purpose, you're, you're elite, you're like intentionally providing dangerous food. No, don't do it. Cook your fucking food. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I want to remind you, everybody out there, Especially the people in China. <laughs> Cook your fucking food, jackass. <laughs> All right. I am going to take one more quick break and I will be right back to wrap things up with some announcements. Hello, and I am Zach, host of Podcast Junkie. Podcast Junkie is a tool for podcast listeners of all genres who are searching for their next favorite show. I review a different podcast series or season each week, helping discerning listeners like you discover new shows and connect with their creators. Each episode lasts between 4 to 15 minutes and gives you, the listener, a quick overview of the week's selection, what to expect from this show, and why I think you should add it to your queue. I'll even toss in a bite-sized snippet from an episode or even their trailer. Along with doing these weekly reviews to help you get in touch with a new podcast, I also support indie podcasts through my merch sales and Patreon contributions. Find out more about that and myself over on Twitter, at CastJunkie, or over at CastJunkie.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope I can help you find your next favorite binge. So, normally this would be the time for recommended listening. And the main reason why I don't have one right now is honestly a little vain. I have a couple recommendations that I have lined up, but you know how I like to play little promos and clips and stuff so you have a taste for them? Well, I don't have that right now. And so what I, I, I just need to reach out to those shows that I'm really, that I'm looking to feature right now and get some promos or something going for them. And so, yeah, there's that. That's mostly it is I, I just don't like talking about a show when I don't have some sort of example to play for you. Um, I will say that from one of these shows, I will actually have the host as a guest coming up soon, possibly next week, depending on what um, scheduling works out for her and myself and, you know, home stuff and everything that's going on here. So depending on how that all works out, I may have that particular uh, host on next week. We will see. That being said, 
So something I kind of want to do, and it's, it's a little bit of expanding my guests is I, I think I mentioned uh, in the last show that I kind of wanted, I want to do more guests. I want to have more guests on here and I want to do more appearances on other podcasts and part to uh, promote the show and kind of get my voice out there to more people. And in part to just have like, to have more experience kind of interacting with more people out there in the space, because in the last year or so I've, I've really kind of fallen off of that. I used to be much more active in the space. I used to do a lot more promotion for a lot of other people and a lot more. And I I really kind of fallen back and not doing, I'm not, I'm not as active with other podcasters as I used to be. And I kind of, I don't like that. I've kind of gotten there. And so I want to do more of that. And for my recommendations, I really want to get more from you, from, you know, dear listener out there, because I, and I've said this before, I have a, a particularly limited variety. I listen to what I listen to. And at this point, I listen to so many shows that it is a little tougher for me to add new shows to my, my listening, to my repertoire, as it were. And so I, I would love to have you call in and leave me, leave me a voicemail with your recommendations. And again, the voicemail, and I, I didn't mention it at all last week. It's at 516-636-7631 or 516-ODOPOD1. Of course, links in the show notes, cause it is, as always. Um, <laughs> but I want your recommendations. And I would love to have like people come on and tell me it, it's going to become a regular part in, in the very, very early interviews and guest spots. I had them giving me a recommendation and I really want to get back into that. But also I may very well just have people come on that want to kind of talk about their thing. What are they doing? And maybe just to come on and promote what they're doing. And hey, we're launching a new podcast or hey, we started new season two of this thing or um, whatever or something like that. N- more for any, anybody that I'm going to talk to is somebody that I think is interesting and somebody worth having a conversation with. But as I've talked about with like when Paul Chomo was on, it's or even with um, Derek from Rolling Misadventures. When I have guests on. As much as the, like, hey, you know, you come on, I want you to talk about your thing. What are you famous for? You know, what are, if somebody wants to know something, like if they know you, what do they know you for? I'm not going to say you can't talk about what you're known for. We got to hit it at some point. Otherwise, there's no point in, you know, like, well, who are they? I don't know what they're here for. But I like being that outlet for people to come on and talk about the other stuff that they do that or whatever they're into or they talk about that's not what they're into or not what they're known for. Again, I go back to Paul Chomo and anything but animals. <laughs> like, And so, you know, talking podcasting and production stuff with Derek and, you know, this is just what we do. It's what I do. I like as, as introverted as I am normally, I like having these conversations with people. And I want to talk to more people kind of outside my bubble because up to this point, everybody I've had on the show are friends. That's it. They're all podcaster friends. Um, I don't think I've had a single guest on who was not a podcaster. And the only one that I've had on that was not already a friend was Najee Walker. And we're kind of cool. I mean, it's like we don't have like an active friendship, but we're, you know, cool guy. And so I want to have more people that I don't necessarily know that well. And people maybe outside of podcasting. I don't know. Yeah, no, no. But like you say, hey, you want to come over, talk about your thing, whatever you're doing. I'm cool with it. And I want to talk about what is it you do <laughs> besides the thing you're known for? What is something that Joe Schmo, who knows who you are, what's something they don't know about you? What's something else besides the podcast you're famous for? What's something else about, just like, talk about something else. 
And of course, I want to know what you're listening to. But, that being said, if you want to be a guest on the show, hit me up, show at odddadoutpodcast.com. And let me know. If you want to actually be on the show, you want to sit down and talk to me for some strange reason. You want to talk to me, you say, hey, I'm starting a podcast soon, or I just launched my podcast, or I'm a YouTuber, or I want to write a book, or hey, I just want to talk to you. Hey, how's it going? Fuck it. Go ahead. Hit me up. We can work out some scheduling. We'll figure things out. And I will have you on the show because I, I enjoy talking to people. I have learned that in all of my introvertedness. in this. I do enjoy talking to people here and having these conversations, and it's fun. And I like just getting to know people when they're just relaxed. I don't care. It's fun. You get to be you. I get to be me. And we get to joke around and have fun. And that's 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 what I want to do. I want you to be able to come here and have fun. So if you want to be on the show, again, hit me up, show at odd.outpodcast.com or hit me up on the social medias. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at odddadout. I have a LinkedIn profile. I don't fuck it is. <laughs> Honest, I do. Um, or go to the Oddballs Facebook group, which you should do anyway, where you, again, can share all your weird news story shit. I'm trying to do more in there. I always say that. I want to do more in there. But share your weird news shit. Share your whatever the fuck. You Somebody just cut you off in traffic and you want to rant. Go for it. Fuck it. Yeah. You want to rant about that asshole who just cut you off in the in the parking lot? Fuck it. Go for it. I, I'm, 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 I'm all here for you because we've all been there. <laughs> you just want to backhand your kid because they're being lippy? Let us know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just rambling because I do. But before I go, I just want to say thank you to my awesome Patreon supporters. You can join them at patreon.com slash out. And I'm talking about Kate from Ignorance Was Bliss, Chris from Play Comics, who you heard at the start of the show, Lisa and Sam from I Shake My Head, and the always wonderful Heather from Sunshine and Power Cuts, who I'm going to get to meet sometime in the spring. It's going to be awesome. I will keep you updated. <laughs> if I could get her live on the show, that would be amazing. I don't know. There's going to be shit going on. We got live stream for The Cure coming up soon. I'm going to be talking about that more later. But one last announcement. And I mentioned it on the last show. I did it. And I realize I'm all over the place. So much stuff to announce. OddDadOut.com is now mine. I have it. And if you go to OddDadOut.com, it now will go to the main website. And eventually I'm going to get everything converted. It currently still sits at odddeadoutpodcast.com. I'm going to be moving everything over to the other domain and making sure because, you know, I've got a million and one links out there right now. I don't want to break all of them because I think I might. But I'm going to be going through the process in the coming months of moving everything to odddeadout.com because it's just nice to have it. But you can go to odddadout.com and it goes to me. Yay, it's mine. I got it. It's mine. I have it now. <laughs> I, I don't know why with the laugh. But anyway, <laughs> remember to share the show with your friends. Go to odddadout.com. Subscribe to the show. Share it with all your friends on all the social medias. Send me your recommendations. Send me your voicemails. 516 odopod one Again, the links are in the show notes as always. And until next week, oddballs, hopefully. Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs>